welcome to Advanced and Performance Driving, I'm Reg Local. Uh, we're in Ireland at the moment, never been to Ireland before. Uh, so normally, and you'll see from some of the, the videos that I've posted previously, we have our two week summer holiday up in Scotland, but we've decided on a bit of a change this year. We've rented a lovely old gatehouse in County Sligo. Cue the opportunity to show a bit of gratuitous drone footage of the gatehouse that we're staying in but it is lovely and it's a lovely part of the world never been to Ireland before either northern or southern Ireland and uh, we're really enjoying our trip over here it's a lovely part of the world people are very friendly and we've come over in Mrs Locals Mini so I've got my special co convertible driving hat on today I'm getting one or two odd looks from the locals but to be honest I'm 50 tomorrow I couldn't care less I've got to that age it's actually quite nice to get to that age where you don't care what people think. So it's not really an instructional video this, it's more of a vlog really I suppose. I, I wouldn't consider myself to be a vlogger but uh, I don't know, let me know what you think. I to share my thoughts every now and again rather than concentrating on a particular aspect of driving this time. I'm just going to have a chat with you about something that's been that's bugging me a little bit really. I suppose I want to get it off my chest. Um, and uh, the, the video was prompted by an email that I, I, I received the other day and I, I get emails from people all the time asking me bits of questions and stuff and some questions about advanced driving and this was from a police officer who'd um, recently completed a standard police driving course and was, was going on to do uh, his advanced driving course and it was a question relating to one of my previous videos and it related to uh, an overtake that I did on the way up to Scotland I think it was a couple of years ago. So in the video I carry out an overtake and to the off side of the road, on the right hand side of the road, is an empty lay-by. And this chap's point was that during his driving course he'd been told that any offside elements or any offside risks such as junctions, lay-bys to the right, etc., uh, were an absolute no-no, that they should not overtake under any circumstances if there was any kind of offside risk. And it led me on to thinking about how advanced driving is taught, teaching methods that uh, different organisations, different people use. There's one thing that concerns me about how advanced driving can be taught in this country sometimes, and that's what I'm going to call absolutism. I don't even know if that's a word, I've made it up, but absolutism to me mean, means that a lot of the techniques and a lot of the things that you learn in, in advanced driving or better driving or whatever you want to call it, are taught in a way where the instructor, the observer, the coach will tell somebody that you absolutely must do it this way or you absolutely must not do it that, that way. So very black and white, very right and wrong, very correct and incorrect. When actually driving, there's very little within driving that's black and white. It's one massive huge grey area. So whenever I get asked a question about driving, what should I do about double white lines? What should I do about a certain junction or a roundabout or an approach or a position or an overtake? The answer to that question is very rarely do this. The answer usually starts with, well, it depends. And that's because every circumstance that you encounter on the road, every hazard that you encounter is different. And even if it's the same physical hazard, if it's the same roundabout that you'd negotiate every day of the week. And you might drive around that roundabout several times every day, but every time you approach it, the circumstances are different because the traffic on the roundabout is different, the weather's different, the visibility, you know, and it can vary from different times of the year. The view might be good in winter when there's no leaves on the trees and it might be poor in summer. And one of the problems with this absolutism, as I'm calling it, is that it sows the seed in the mind of people who are still in the learning process that you can only do things one way and you cannot do things another way. So the example that I gave before, the chap who uh, was told on his police standard driving course, you must never overtake when there's an offside hazard. I'll show you the overtake. I'll play it through now, let you have a look at it. So you can see it's absolutely correct, there is a lay-by to the offside, 
and I can see it on approach. But actually what I've done is overtake the first car well before we get to the lay-by. So there's no danger at all. Even if that car was to put an indicator on and pull into that lay-by, I would be well past it before there was any the slightest risk that we come into conflict. But then you'll see the second car is a red one, a red car, and you can actually hear that I lift off the gas. And that's because the lay-by is on the offside, and I'm waiting to be sure that that driver isn't pulling into that lay-by before I carry out the overtake. Once we got to a certain point, it was obvious there was no slowing from that car. There was no chance of it pulling into that lay-by, and that's when I completed the overtake on the red car, and I think one other one afterwards. So if we're going to go by the rule that's been taught to this police officer in his standard driving course, then I've broken the rule. It may well be that if I was on test with that particular police force, that the examiner might have failed me. But actually what I've done is given it a little bit more thought. I thought around the circumstances, I've eliminated as far as I possibly can all risk, and the overtake was on. So if I'm thinking progressively, I want to move the car along, be progressive, then the overtake was fine. You might have a different view on that, and that's fine. You put your views in, in, in the comments below if you like. Well, let's think about some of the other absolutes that we hear about in, in advanced driver training. Let's challenge some of these things. Here's a good one, signalling. So those of you that may have done an IAM course or a ROSPA course will be familiar with an instruction where the observer or the instructor will say to you, don't put a signal on unless there is somebody there who will benefit from that signal. Now the idea behind that instruction, and I've given that instruction previously when I worked in police driver training, is to get away, it's to move that driver away from automatically signalling for every single move that they make on the road, and get them thinking about whether a signal is necessary. What we're not trying to do and this is where people get this wrong, this is where observers, instructors get this wrong. What we're not trying to do is eliminate signalling or reduce signalling. What we want is the driver, the student, the associate if you like, to think a little bit more about whether a signal is necessary or not. So what I'd like to see with that particular instruction is a change to the way it's given. And yes, we want people to think about signals, but actually, if you're in any doubt whatsoever, put a signal on because don't forget we make our driving plans based on what we can see and what we can't see and what we can reasonably expect to happen so just because you can't see a vehicle a driver a cyclist a pedestrian who might benefit from a signal doesn't mean that there isn't one out of sight what we can't see and what we can reasonably expect to happen so it's quite common I'm an examiner for the I am it's quite common for me to see people approaching a roundabout, look in the mirror and say, I'm not putting a signal on because there's nobody behind. Well, that's a real misunderstanding of that instruction. And part of that is because that instruction is given in the wrong way. So those of you out there that are instructing, that are observing, just change the way that you give that instruction a little bit. Tell people that if they're in any doubt, put a signal on, even if there's nobody actually in view, because somebody might be out of view. And the flip side of that, the downside of not putting the signal on is, you know, you could argue that the information runs throughout the system, you can put a signal on at any time on your approach to a hazard. Yes, you can. So if a car or a cyclist or a pedestrian comes into view, you can put a signal on at that point. Yes, you can, and that's correct. However, remember that a lot of people out there only look once. And if their first view of you is without a signal on, if you then subsequently put the signal on, there's a good chance that it's too late because they've looked away at that point and they've already made the decision. So let's rethink that signalling instruction a little bit. It's much more common for me to dip people marks around signalling on an advanced car test for not signalling than it would be if somebody was putting a signal on a bit more regularly in anticipation that there might be somebody who'd benefit. So let's look at some more of those absolutes that I'm talking about. What about this one? You must not break in a corner. Just broken that rule. But there's a demonstration. I'm going around a corner, I've pressed the brakes, the car comes to a nice controlled stop. There are no issues whatsoever. So why do we tell people 
that we must not break in a corner. It's the wrong instruction to give. I, I totally get it. It is better on the road to get all your braking done in a straight line on the approach to a corner or a hazard. Then come off the brakes, take the gear and drive through. And you'll see in some of my other videos where I'm uh, advocating that we get everything sorted before the corner and then be back on the gas at an early point. The car's more balanced, it's more settled and you get a better feel from the car as you drive through a corner than you do if you decelerate or brake. And there is a possible, you know, a, a car braking in a corner is less balanced because the weight is transferring sideways as well as front and back. Does that mean we can't brake in a corner? Absolutely not. The whole point of the limit point is it is the furthest point you've got an uninterrupted view of the road surface. And what's the overriding safety rule? You've always got to be able to stop on your own side of the road in the distance you can see to be clear. That's what the limit point is. It's the distance you can see to be clear. So if you drive into a corner, bearing in mind that you've got to be able to stop between you and the limit point, you get halfway around that corner and there's somebody riding a horse, or there's somebody on a bicycle, or there's some other obstruction in the road, well, you're going to have to brake. And the limit point will allow you to do that safely and under control on your own side of the road. You use the limit point and assess the limit point correctly. So anybody who tells you that you must not brake in a corner, I'd suggest that that person's fundamentally misunderstanding the reason that we give that instruction. The instruction should be, let's try and avoid braking in corners, but if you need to brake, then by all means brake. So here's another one. Some of you who've undertaken an advanced driving course might have heard this one before. You must have both hands on the wheel while you're braking. I think I just broke that rule. I know somebody who's got one arm. He finds it really difficult to keep both hands on the wheel while braking. Actually, as you can see, I've just taken my hands on the wheel very slowly on an isolated road, but in a straight line, when there's no camber to pull me in either direction, the car will pull up very safely in a straight line with my hands off the wheel. So why, why do people give that instruction? Well, again, it's, it's a fundamental misunderstanding of an old police driving instruction. And what you've got to remember with police driving instruction is police instructors have a limited amount of time to get people up to standard and to get them driving to the system of car control. So some of the instructions that those police instructors use are fairly basic. To stop somebody's hand from going down to the gear stick while they're braking, the instruction is keep your hands on the wheel while you're braking. But that's not because you need your hands on the wheel while you're braking. It's to prevent that student from going down to the gear stick. So it's quite interesting that one. I spoke to rooms full of advanced drivers and observers and ask them that question, why do we try to separate the braking and the changing gear? Why do we do them separately? And somebody generally will stick the hand up at some point and say, it's because you need both hands on the wheel while you're braking, which is nonsense. That instruction helps you to get over this habit of going down for the gear stick while you're braking, but it's not necessary to have both hands on the wheel. So let's try and, those of you that are teaching this stuff, those observers amongst you, those instructors amongst you, let's try and give people a more rounded explanation as to why we're teaching certain techniques and certain ideas. Here's what I've heard a few times. Don't hook your thumbs through the steering wheel. You must always put your thumbs, hands at 10 to two, thumbs on the steering wheel. So when you ask why, why should I not hook my thumbs through the steering wheel, the reply you usually get is, well, if you have an accident and the wheel suddenly violently moves in your hands, you could break your thumbs. Well, I was in the police for nearly 20 years, dealt with probably thousands of road accidents in that time. Never once did I ever meet anybody who'd broken their thumbs in an accident. So I st I, again, I, th I think this is a fundamental misunderstanding of a basic instruction that's given at certain times. And that's an instruction that's given at times when people are learning off-road driving. So driving off-road, driving a Land Rover, you know, low range, diff lock, very, very bumpy roads, the wheel will move around an awful lot in your hands. And it's good practice to keep your thumbs outside the steering wheel when you're driving off-road. I'm going to be doing some off-road driving soon over in India. We're going to film that. Um, so if you're interested in off-road driving, I'll show you a bit of that stuff. But on the road, I think the risk is so minimal 
that actually there's no harm in hooking your thumbs through the steering wheel. It's how I generally drive uh, these days. It's how I generally hold the steering wheel at quarter to three rather than at ten to two. You'll see me fluctuate between the two, but, but generally quarter to three with my thumbs hooked through the steering wheel. Look at the steering wheel, it's how it's designed to be held. If the airbag goes off, that's not going to cause me any harm. The airbag isn't coming out under my thumbs either. Anyway, that's it. I feel better now I've got that off my chest. I suppose the, um, the message I'm trying to give is that if you are in the process of learning this stuff, if you're undertaking a course of instruction, or if you're just trying to get a little bit better by watching videos on YouTube, that's fantastic. Keep learning, but question things. If somebody tells you that you must do something a certain way, ask them why, ask them what the reasons are. Make sure that you understand why they're giving you that instruction and why it's important for you to do things in that way. And if you're teaching this stuff, if you're an observer, if you're an instructor, you do a little bit of coaching at weekends like I do. Give people the reasons why you want them to do things. Actually start to question this stuff yourself. There's no harm in questioning things. Porsche drivers, just be careful when you're pulling out. <laughs> so yeah, if you're teaching this stuff, just it's always worthwhile, even though you might have been teaching things like this for years, go back and re-question why you're doing certain things. Very easy to lose people in the learning process if you don't give them good reasons why you're doing things in a certain way. Now, I've spoken to a number of people who so say, I gave the IAM a go, I had a go, I went once and this fella didn't like how I put my thumbs on the wheel or this woman didn't like how I held the gear stick. These things are little details. I'm speaking from an examiner's perspective here. I want to see the fundamental basics correct, system, observations, planning. But keep people enjoying it. Try and put a little bit of enjoyment into it. Don't sap the joy out of it by hammering people with loads and loads of rules. Anyway, I've had my little rant now. I feel better. So thanks for watching, I'm Reg Local. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Go and have a look at the website, reglocal.com. Lots more information there about advanced and performance driving. Should be a few more videos coming over the next couple of months. Some of the old school instructional videos. I'm gonna have a look at automatic gearboxes and semi-automatics and things. Uh, but also some off-roading, trip to India, other things that hopefully they enjoy. So click the notifications button as well, the little bell. You'll get an email then whenever I upload a new video. But for now, from me and the Mini and the convertible driving hat in County Sligo, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.